Uh, welcome, good afternoon to another Sabbath podcast. I'm Mercy Ballard, Med Missionary co founder, uh, Dr. Joyce Che, and I started these programs on April 2020. Because of the beginning of the pandemic, we needed a support group to navigate in this difficult and unpredictable times. So um, one of our focus has been to empower all of us with tools to apply the health message that God has given us as an answer to what was going on to do our little part, showing that God has the solutions. So today we have a special interview, um, but before we start it, I'd like to start with a word of prayer. So let's start. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to do another podcast. And I just want to ask you that this, this interview will be a blessing for many people. There is many people in the world that are, are looking for solutions. And, and we know we you have the solutions, even in very difficult times, especially in very difficult times. So I just want to ask you to bless us as we uh, uh, talked about these uh, issues for these times. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so we have here uh, Caroline Austin. Um, Caroline, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your background? Sure. Uh, I was born in Covalo, uh, where my brother is still the caretaker for Doug Bachelor's property. And uh, I was born there and went to school there. And um, my parents thought that Jesus was coming like any time now. And um, we had a, a pretty natural background in herbs and things like that for helping us to get well. But we began to move every year. So when I was 10 and uh, when I ended up moving to Humboldt County, and this is where I've been living for the last oh, 25 years, I guess. And uh, when I got sick, I was here. Mm, OK, so you move. So you have a. Back Adventist background. So you grew up yes, Adventist and your parents believed that Jesus is coming. You guys were doing country living and yeah. then you did herbs and things like that. How about the health message? Do you follow the health message when you were growing up? We did pretty well. My parents, when they got married, they became Adventist and they both came from ranching backgrounds where they did slaughtering and have their own animals every year. And that was their background that they came from. But when they got married, they, I forget the name of the pastor, but they uh, were converted and uh, my mother put her wedding ring in the offering plate and uh, <laughs> they, uh, they tried to live a, you know, a vegetarian diet. And so I grew up on a large diet of lots of gluten. <laughs> <laughs> and um, dad would occasionally have a hot dog or fried chicken, but he didn't do it in our house. He would, you know, he would take us out to A&W for a hamburger or something. So we pretty, we had very little meat in our life growing up. Um, we had a cow and of course, you know, a few chickens. So that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But, but I think that was okay in those days. I considered a healthy egg is good for you. Mm hmm. Yes. OK, so you did a lacto or vegetarian. Maybe. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. so that's where that was your life almost all the way. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. OK, so then um, what, what, what do you do for a living? Well, um, I was a, a legal secretary and then I was um, I had a paralegal certificate. And then I became a medical transcriptionist, which mm -hmm. was what I was doing here when at the time that I got sick. Oh, I see. I see. So you work in the hospital? In yeah, I did. Yes, I did. I'm okay. retired now. Yeah. So you're very familiar with uh, the terminology, the medical system, mm -hmm. uh, therapies mm -hmm. in, the, in the hospital. So you're very familiar with all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So tell me. Why do you think, when do you start getting sick and uh, when was that and what do you think was the reason that you got sick? Well, I, I moved up to a little cabin. I was going to go look at a little cabin for rent when I moved here. And mm -hmm. um, when I got to the top, it was a long drive up a mountain. And when I got to the top of the hill, um, I've never heard my angel's voice before. But sitting in my seat beside me, my angel told me in an urgent tone, do not go there. 
And when I looked down over the hill and saw this cute little cabin, I could see it was too small for me. But I felt like, so I argued with my angel and I said, um, you know, I can see it's too small for me, but I've driven all this way and I would like to go look at it. Well, I ended up living there. And um, the people who lived there had uh, used some glyphosate to poison me three different times, as well as one of the other renters that they had on their ranch. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a vineyard. And um, I didn't realize since I had no um, distrust of anybody, I never locked my house. I didn't do anything like that to protect myself. And I was so un un unbelieving that that it was actually happening, that it ha had to happen three times before I finally realized that I was working. Uh, I did transcription at home as well for another local clinic. So um, I had to talk to the ER doctor, talk about my symptoms. And the last time it happened, I thought I was I was going to die. And mm -hmm. um, I um, I was asleep and it, I heard a little ding. I actually heard it in my, it was like it was in my head. And um, when I woke up, I realized I was going to be sick. And this time I was going to die. And it was straight up midnight. So um, I called the emergency room and I asked the night nurse. I said, if I came in, would you do anything more than give me charcoal? And he said, what makes you think you've been poisoned? And I said, I'm just asking you a question. Would you give me something other than charcoal? And he said, no. And I go, okay, then I'm not going to come in. So I went over to my sister's house because um, I could, it was something that it just felt like something went past the blood brain barrier. And it was not like any being sick to your stomach food poisoning that I'd ever had before. It was like different. And I just sat and I just felt like my head was, um, I don't know how to explain it. it. It's very difficult to explain and express. You just sit there and you don't, you feel awful on your whole body. But um, I found out later on that if you, if you get poisoned with Roundup or glyphosate, it was Roundup was what they used, but um, I found out later. But uh, then you have like eight hours to get in to get tested to see what it is because it goes through your body so fast that they're not able to identify it. Mm -hmm. So they told me that. So the ER doctor told me to get out of there. So I did. I moved out. But the next, um, see, this happened in 2000. And so for the next I don't know how many years I tried so many different things trying to get well. I just sort of went from one. See, now when you're not well, if you're experiencing anything that you feel is resistance, strep, or anything like that, that you don't know what to do about, and you don't know where to go for help. And so you look on the internet, you begin listening for things, you ask people, and then you begin trying things. You'll try this. You think, okay, I found it now. And then you find out that, no, that that did one thing, maybe one thing out of it was good, but then you have to try something else. Mm -hmm. And um, my family didn't understand. And my sister said, you just keep changing things you're doing. And I go, well, if something doesn't work, you have to try something different. And they mm -hmm. didn't understand. So uh, I tried I'm many, many. Gonna, I just want to clarify something. You know, um, there's Roundup round up all over, right? They spread the park, respect spread mm -hmm. you know the food and things like that so we might be really close to a, a field where they're spreading and so we, we're constantly being uh toxic from roundup so a lot of people cannot recover because they're even eating roundup because it's contaminated right they they spread it so um in your case uh seems like you had more exposure than more people perhaps uh, concentration but you know i believe that the the glyphosate issue is a very serious one um i i believe that in my own case my own health uh i start getting sick because of of the glyphosate you know that they put it in the food and and i didn't know at that time because that was 2003 when i started getting sick and I was sick for about three years and nobody could figure it out. At that mm. time, nobody thought that life said it's a poison, things like that. So I, I had a, such a hard time. It's so many people. There's so many people, thousands, millions of people. This is an epidemic. So there's millions of people that are sick and nobody could f figure it out, right? Because this is this is a real um, toxic, I mean, very serious toxicity you can get from from uh glyphosate and i, I want to also say that the mm -hmm. foods you know the legumes that are not organic they spread it 
to dry it fast, they spread it with, with um, rain mm -hmm. down, down. Mm -hmm. and life said they also uh, spread it, um, you know, in, in the parks, you know, on apartments for the grass control, I mean, the weed control. So it's, it's almost all over. It's very, very sad that, uh, you know, very difficult to survive in these times, but we know that God has the answer. But uh, tell, tell us, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that's okay. I was just gonna say, I found, I discovered, and I believe this is true, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but that uh, glyphosate will go past your blood brain barrier, but it attaches to your protein cells so that when, in order to try to get it to separate out, in order to get it out of your body, it's kind of difficult. And so um, your body can attack itself. Mm -hmm. And also um, what glyphosate does is um, also you cannot absorb your, your minerals and you're depleted because it's a chelator. So it depletes you with that and then you ended up um, with anemia, blood transfusions, things like that. That, that was my case. So, um, okay, so go ahead. So tell us. Uh, the, what are the modalities that you try? Because you, you're plant-based, you eat pretty healthy, but you're super sick, you know, like many people, right? They're, they're very health conscious and they're super sick and they don't know mm -hmm. what to do uh, because they have a very good lifestyle. So tell me, um, you were desperate because nothing was working. And um, what was the first therapy that you tried? Well, the first thing that happened to me, I was cleaning a house. Well, I changed to cleaning houses for people because just, well, I won't go into the reasons why, but um, that way my hours could be a little, I could take care of myself better and I still had to earn a living, but I was cleaning a house for a gentleman who had a, a little thing he called a zapper and he said, why don't you try this? He knew that I wasn't feeling well. So I tried it and it was amazing that it did something for me. And he showed me a book by Dr. Hulda Clark and many of you are probably familiar with Holda Clark. She um, she had the cure for all diseases. She has all these books, and she and her son were uh, very scientifically oriented. Um, she invented many interesting things. So I tried that, and then I tried to follow her liver cleanses, and I was really doing Holda Clark for quite a while. And then, but uh, it just became just a constant effort, you know. Um, I had to clean my liver like twenty one different times, and um, Mm -hmm. I would just think all the time. And, you know, I think uh, then I ran into something by by John Thomas, who uh, has a pro he had things for colonics. So I bought a colonics board and I tried to follow all of his instructions. And he had this vitamin B12 cream that you could apply topically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that you would get it would go directly into your skin and um, instead of taking it orally. And uh, I tried him and then I got a Rife machine <laughs> and uh, I tried mm. some things with that. So what does the machine do? Is, is that the radionics? No, the radionics came later. Uh, the Rife okay. machine is uh, Dr. Rife discovered in his laboratory that radio waves would, uh, if you could find exactly the right frequency for a bacteria, it would explode it. And so mm -hmm. he started his program and, um, uh, he got in trouble at first because his radio waves were going out and treating all the people in his neighborhood. And so he had to try to find another way to do that. So he created this machine and um, we have some quite some nice ones out there now where you just use it for all kinds of different things. It's got the sets of frequencies all together. So you just enter a number and you just lay there and hold these rods and uh, it treats you. And they're, they'll put you to sleep. It'll make you relaxed. It's wonderful. But at the same time, it was not a permanent cure. All mm -hmm. it did was help me to get through the day. I see. Yeah. Okay. And the next therapy the that next you tried. Oh, you had so many. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had so many different things. I, I tried the uh, lemonade cleanse, you know, where it's just lemonade and maple syrup and cayenne pepper. I went on a fast, lemonade fast. How long did you do that? I did it for 10 days. And, so that uh, was a fast 10 days with that yeah, just 10 drink. days. That's yeah. all you did. That was the drink. Yeah, that was it. And the cayenne pepper keeps your um, metabolism up so you stay warm. Okay, so I tried other fasts. and um, But did that help uh, some? Or well, not, it, it, it did help. 
it helps some, but you know, it just didn't deal with uh, my memory. I could look at somebody and I wouldn't know their name or I couldn't think of something that was in my mind that I knew I knew. And uh, it would be somebody that, that maybe I have known all my life. I couldn't think my head wasn't working. And I went on a uh, iodine cleanse where I was doing like 30 drops of iodine at a time, a couple times a day and did that for a year. And that really did a lot. I got rid of a lot of parasites. And um, the iodine cleanse help. So that, uh, that iodine cleanse was put up by whom? You know, I don't remember where I, I heard about it. There was this, um, there's this doctor on the internet that uh, he's pretty famous. I can't think of his name. I was trying to think of it yesterday and I still can't think of it. Uh, so uh, he had this iodine cleanse. I know when I was trying to find him like last month, I couldn't find him, but um, he's pretty well known. He had his own particular iodine that he did, um, that he used and sold to people. Um, I I was using detox supplements, and in fact, I think I almost killed myself um, overworking my liver. You know, making my liver detox, 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 and you got to realize you have to support your liver. You can't just uh, make it work you to death. So, uh, yeah. Then radionics came along. I I um, when I was a teenager, my mother had this little book called The Cure for All Diseases, mm -hmm. and it tells the story of, of Nord Davis and how he had cancer. And he, he met Dr. Reams at his retreat. And while he was at this retreat, um, they tested him just a few little tests, the pH, his sugar, his uh, pHs, his sugar levels, his conductivity from his salt levels, his debris, his uh, um, ammonia and the nitrate nitrogen levels. And, um, he was able to tell him like oh, everything that was wrong with him without asking him any questions. And um, so at first he didn't believe it. He thought he would trick Dr. Reem. So he went home and he did some different things. He ate, drink, drank green drink, did all kinds of stuff. And he went back and the doctor said, you're worse because you didn't do what I told you to do. So then I got interested in Dr. Reem's and his biological theory of ionization. So I went to school for three years studying this program through Dr. Wow. Beto. And Dr. Reams was an Adventist, by the way, which was interesting. And Dr. Beto was as well. He was a dentist. But uh, so uh, then I went on. I went to this Dr. Chalo or no, Challen Wakoff, who actually studied under Dr. Reams and knew him personally. And Dr. Reams was an acquaintance of Einstein. He was a very brilliant biophysicist and an agronomist and many other things. So um, I would, I had my own lab kit. <laughs> wow. I would test, test all my numbers and I would call him once a week and give him my numbers. And he would tell me what to eat for the next week or two and what supplements so to take. Every week was a different food or every one to two weeks was a different food, it, depending it on the result. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Because so you have to shop shift. different foods every yeah. time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it got to be, but and I then, felt, how long did you do that? I did that for probably six months and uh, I was feeling really, really good. I felt great, but he, he put so much weight on me. I got to 165 pounds. He said that the uh, most difficult kind of a person to deal with, with this program is someone who has dropping blood sugar. And I had a dropping blood sugar because I was pretty alkaline, but, um, so I kept putting on this weight. And finally, I just hit a point where I'm going, I, I'm not putting on any more weight. This is it. I can hardly get off the bed. Uh, so I, so so in I a quit. way, it was helping you, but in another way, it uh, was helping, right? It was. Yeah. Who knows how you would take, yeah, you have to take to solve it. I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, what he's thinking is that all this weight is giving extra fat cells to store the toxins so the body can take the toxins and put them in these fat cells. And then a little bit at a time, I can release these fat cells and get rid of these toxins. I don't know what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. And, and then you're doing time. six months already. Yeah. So a continuous thing and you still... Seems like a non-ending, right? Yeah, it seemed like it was not ending. It seemed like, I don't know how long it was going to take. And um, well, he died later on and he, bless his heart. He was a wonderful man. He, you know, he was so sincere and uh, pretty brilliant. He has his own books out. So I was doing that. And um, all right. So how was that involved with radionics? It was because when I I was on a, 
Vern Bates had a phone line and he's an Adventist fellow who's passed on now, but he would get out the original books. And one Sabbath on our teleconference call, I asked anybody, I said, say, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to get well. And, and my mom used to have a book where you just had to have your pHs and you could uh, figure out what to do about it. Does anybody know about anyone who does saliva testing? And uh, nobody did. But at the end of the day, I got a phone call from someone in Florida who knew of a woman in Canada who was doing this. And, and she introduced me to um, Tom and Joyce. And I can't, I won't give their last name here because of, you know, privacy, but um, they, uh, what they did was they had me spit on something and answer and write out what my problems were. And I would send it to them and they would put it on their radionics device and they would tell me everything that was wrong with me. And the first thing they did was check for minerals. So they got my minerals up and um, they could tell you things that the doctor wouldn't know. They tell you, she's the one who told me that I had cancer in five organs. She's the one who told me that I had, uh, um, you know, that they had given me a vaccine. When I had asked for a B12 shot, they had given me a vaccine instead. And uh, I showed that to them. And uh, they were not happy to have that uncovered. You know, they were concerned and had their insurance person call me. But um I told them, I said, I realized that a court is not going to accept radionics as a as a defense. So I'm not trying to get you guys. I just don't want you to do it to anybody else. Don't do it to anybody else. You know, and so I had problems. Then that hit me on top of everything else. And I started passing out and blacking out after having the. And if I didn't, if I hadn't had Dr. Reams book that said what to do, I checked my sugar. I checked my pHs. He said what to do. I did it and I stabilized. Uh, all right. But then at some point, I'm like, you know, am I going to do this for the rest of my life? And um, I just didn't know. I was feeling like I'm just not getting well. What is my problem? So it, that was the sputum test. Uh -huh. How often you had to do that? Well, I, I have done that on and off for like 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because they, they helped me solve things, but I didn't do it all the time. It was like... If I had an emergency and I just wanted to know what something was, I knew they could tell me what it was. And then Eric Wilson talked about spiritualistic kind of modalities, and that worried me. So I stopped it. Mm -hmm. And tell me one thing. Um, yeah, yes. so I just want to say again that you didn't want to get into spiritualistic things because, you know, mm -hmm. you knew that was in God's ways. So that's when you stopped doing all these things. But tell me. When did you start getting sick? What year was that? Uh, 2000. 2000, okay, between so 2000 been, and 2001. So you've been years. sick for so many years. Right? Yeah. It became like chronic. 20, yeah. Over 20 years. Trying yeah. to find the cure because you're, you're eating fairly good. And mm -hmm. so you had to try something else because nothing was helping you. And mm -hmm. then you try everything and then you figure it out. Oh, this might be having a, a spiritualistic component. So then there's nothing I can do anymore. I cannot do even do this to help me. So what was next? Did you try any more therapies after well, that? Uh, I, my niece had a baby and I decided that I was going to do something for my gut because I was so bloated and miserable. So I asked her to get me some of the baby poop while her baby was just a couple of days old. And I put just a tiny, I would say probably half a teaspoon full into a, a container of yogurt. And I let it culture for a couple of days. And then I took it, stirred it up. And I took a spoon of that yogurt and I put it into a new yogurt and I stirred it up and let that culture. And I did that for probably a week, changing it and changing it. And then I did a, a uh, an enema using that yogurt and warm water. Yeah. And, and um, people... Um, well, finish your sentence and then I will. That's right. Yeah. I felt, I felt an immediate reaction to that, but go ahead. And what was the reaction? Well, it just felt like an electrical thing. It just went up my body from, uh, from one end up to my brain. And I just went, Whoa. And I had this like the energy rush. It's okay. quite interesting. So you have some, something positive from that, uh, and some some quick reaction. But I just want to explain our audience, um, you know, this is called the fecal transplant. Scientifically, that's, that's how they call it, fecal transplant. And they start doing this maybe 10 years ago, something like that, when we start hearing this and was helping 
people that had a, a serious infections. So this was to balance the microbiome, the bacteria. So uh, doing an enema from, you know, the feces of somebody that's healthy and to somebody that is uh, not healthy at all. So they will do that. And especially um, they were doing for people that dealing with C. diff, you know, see the very serious condition that some people can die. So they were doing this and people will um, get better. Some, some people not, uh, some people, they, I, I remember um, uh, working in the conventional field. Uh, one of my patients, they did the fecal transplant and it didn't help. She was very sick. Um, but you know, for some people it, it has worked, but right now they're doing so many studies on the uh, fecal transplant, how it's helping so many people, but it, it has been a little restricted. You don't just do it as, as before when they f first came up. So that's what is fecal transplant. And also uh, before we moving, um, just wanna tell people, I attended to this uh, conference it was about fecal transplant, and I went there with a, uh, two friends. One was a researcher, um, Ron Meinhardt. Some of you might know him, and then uh, Dr. Bill Sweat. He's a gastroenterologist. So we were we attended to that class on fecal transplant, and uh, we uh, after the the class, um, you know, I said, well, I don't, you know, I I always knew that. It, it can be better ways to do this. Um, and I was thinking, how about if we do a vegetable transplant? So after we Somewhere. did this, this class, <laughs> yeah, vegetable transplant, I, that's how I call it. I asked the professor that was doing the class and I said, how about, how about you know, uh, doing an enema with blended vegetables? Uh, well, yeah, I guess you can do like a probiotics, you know, capsule and doing through the rectum area. I said, yeah, but how about vegetables? I said, well, I guess it can be done. So after that, I started helping somebody that uh, wasn't doing well at all. So she did the enema with the vegetables and she seemed, I mean, she, it really helped her. I'm not gonna say that she was recovered because I don't believe there is anything that people can recover un unless we following changing the change the lifestyle right it's not just one thing one remedy is helping and it's healing people because that's what a lot of people are looking for for the therapy the treat another therapy for the pill even if it's a, a you know an herb or it is an um vitamin or, or whatever component it is so they're looking for that but uh um so in, in the case of this lady, we we were doing all we could with changing the diet, following, you know, the, the health message God has given us. But in addition, she did this and uh, it really helped her move to another level. Uh, we still had to do many other things because this is a lady that was sick. I think she was uh, for a few, I think it was about three weeks. Uh, she couldn't tolerate any food. She was just throwing up, throwing up. So we're trying different things. And she got a stable, a stable. And uh, so I praise God for that. But it was many things that we did. But that, that remind me that, you know, the fecal transplant, even now they're doing so much research uh, with that in animals, especially. And they're seeing amazing results. But we know, you know, uh, as a people of God, I, I was just thinking with the frequent transplant, um, you know, when when the camp of Israel, uh, when they had to go, the restaurant, right? They had to get, go out of the camp. So they kept everything clean. So, and as you said uh, yesterday, when we were talking about, you also get everything else, right? So what else uh, do you think you were getting also? When you oh, you know, I, I worried about whether I got a parasite from him because even babies can be born with their parents' parasites. They can be born with the poisons. As a matter of fact, we now know that, uh, is it the mercury level that's in the mother's milk is, is so much that the mother's milk, you can't, it's against a lot of flush it down the toilet, but it's not against a lot to give it to the baby, you know? So there's things you can get 
through the baby can get through their mother. So I was concerned about that. In fact, I went to, uh, we have a little, we, she's dead now, but an herbalist who worked at our local health food store and she gave me a, um, a fecal test so I could send into a lab. And uh, they said that I had almost zero probiotics. And so I was doing things. There was just one diet where it was nothing but carrots and chicken. That's all you have for a week, you know? I mean, I just tried everything. And even though I came from a non-meat eating background, I said, okay, I've got to do something. And uh, yeah, it was, it's quite, quite a hard time, but I, oh. I built up. Oh, finish your sentence. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, you know, my probiotics have been built up since then, but yeah, go ahead. But uh, why do you think your probiotics was almost zero? You know, I, I just have mm -hmm. a little theory. And that's why my thoughts are, you know, when you do know. tell me what you think. Yeah, I'm interested. When you do colonics, you're flushing the good and the bad. So then oh, you have yeah. nothing there. So, yeah. okay. you know, I think it's, it's a good idea to do a cleansing with enemas, but colonic mm -hmm. might be a little too deep. Perhaps a, a lot of people might not agree with this, but it's just my thoughts. You know, mm -hmm. everybody has to have their own convictions. Um mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we like the enemas at the beginning because you're cleansing the bowels that are, you know, accumulating stuff for, for a long time. And mm -hmm. then we do that only for a few days uh, just for the cleansing. But after the, those few days, then we don't do cleansing anymore because now you need to replenish the good bacteria. Then we do. We like to do the vegetable enemas uh, in our lifestyle mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, so... Now you're rebuilding, you know, you cleanse and now you rebuild, but you cannot be cleansing forever. And then, then it's going to be a problem for you, for your liver. It's going to be a problem for your um, bowels, uh, for the microbiome balance and things like that. So we mm -hmm. have to do everything in balance, right? And Absolutely. And you figured it out that you figured it out that. Okay. Yeah. So try the fecal transplant. What do you try next? Well, um, I uh, I had um, the 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 same doctor that was at the health food store. She would sit at a table there on Wednesdays, and anybody could come in and see her about anything, and she would hook them up. So um, she um, she gave me some herbs to try, and when she saw the results of my tests, then she gave me some things to take. But she also <laughs> gave me some things that were so strong: caprylic acid and something else, which I can't remember. Oh, olive leaf and something else, and. Uh, my eardrum exploded and some yellow stuff came out the color of egg yolk. <laughs> wow. I, I don't, so I don't know. So if it that had was, an effect, but it was a little too much perhaps. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe so. So, you know, I think that probably in between, I was just constantly trying to uh, get to just get through each day. If I could just get through the day because mm. uh, life was very, very, very hard. You know, if I yeah. was cleaning somebody's house and I had to get down and scrub the floor, then I had to try to figure out how am I going to get up or then it's how am oh. I going to get down? And, you know, so, uh, yeah, I was not feeling that great. And uh, didn't you have something else? That, it's called ABTI. Oh, that was uh, Reams Biological Theory of Ionization. Dr. Carrie Reams. I think we talked about it a little bit, but uh yeah, that was okay. pretty amazing. So you covered amazing. that. And that mm -hmm. did help, but the, but it wasn't in the long term something that, that yeah. uh, you recovered well, from. I wanted I wanted very much to be in line with, I just in the back of my mind, all I could think of was God's eight laws of health. That's where I want to go. I don't want to just keep going to these complicated things that, you know, there has to be something out there. In the therapy, uh it was meat was involved right yes that, yes there was meat in involved the, in the back in the back of your mind you wanted to do follow you know the gas ways yeah okay so you try so you nothing was working and then um can you tell us uh what were your symptoms okay well to, uh, towards the end or towards the beginning i i uh, yeah, don't know so at the beginning I, and at the end mm -hmm. I, I was so miserable that I could hardly, I could hardly function. I was hardly functioning. I would um, get up and do one thing at a time. And if, when I went to work um, doing medical transcription, at least I didn't have to move very much. I could just type and I could type really fast. You know, I could just sit there and type and my day would go by and then I would go home and just fall down on the bed and, um, use you know do whatever i could do to get through the night you know 
Um, the coffee flushes were very helpful. And I wouldn't do because... Coffee flushes. The, what yeah. are those? Oh, you mean well, enemas. Yeah, enemas. Coffee enemas, yeah. They just okay. call it a coffee break. Taking a coffee break. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, the, the results of the coffee brain, you know, I mean, the coffee... Enemas, we have some people that come to our life cell center doing that do coffee enemas and they if they don't get it, they get headaches. So uh -huh. it's so it's it you it goes to your system because in the colon you absorb uh -huh. fluids. So it's absorbing is going through your body. It's not like it's going and coming out. It's having an effect in your liver, it's having an effect in your um body because it's absorbing, right? So because a lot of people say, oh no, uh Drinking coffee is not it's not good, but enemas are okay. But you're still having the same effects as drinking because it's absorbing. Might not absorb hundred percent, but it does absorb. Uh, what you because then you have a bowel movement and then some of it come out, but some stays there. Mm -hmm. And because the mm -hmm. coffee has effect for pain, right? So people, mm -hmm. uh, it helps the pain. It gives you energy. Same thing as you know, very similar as, as drinking. So that was helping you um, for, for, yeah, well, for just the to get through the Yeah, just to get through the day. And okay. the other thing that I did, I had forgotten about was uh, drinking a um, a quart of hot salt water, um, mm -hmm. which is what, um, I forget his name now, uh, Wolf, um, it was, he's no longer with us, but he was an Adventist health person and um uh, he would give you something he called tuna pie, which was like a sea salt and water, salt water, and you drink it, and it it has a um, a flushing effect. And I could sleep all night after doing that before bed. If I could drink a quart of that salt water, I could just go to sleep and I could feel peaceful. So mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was doing or why, but it felt like it was good. And I just go probably, always just struggling to get through the day. Probably the magnesium, the minerals, and in, in that salt. But how long do you do the salt water? How many nights? Well, um, oh, maybe once or twice a week. Okay. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. That's what I would I did. And um, if when I needed it, if I was especially miserable, you know, and I could take a hot bath and soak with Epsom salts or um, Epsom salts and a food grade hydrogen peroxide in the bathtub, you know, and I tried a, a clay bath too. I bought clay powder that you could do a home bath and soaked in it and um uh, I would just try and whatever I could do to get along and get through yes. the day. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you try so many things. Tell us more of the, uh, tell us the neurological symptoms you were having. Oh man, I had uh, nerve pain and um, now I feel like I have healing going on because I have little shooting pains in my hands where the nerves, my hands were numb and tingling and my feet were numb and tingling and um mm -hmm. Also, so numbness, tingling, headaches, um, uh -huh. a brain fog. Brain fog, brain terrible, brain fog. terrible. And what kind of uh, digestive systems were you, uh, symptoms were you having? Oh, well, I was uh, just terribly bloated and uh, I have, would have diarrhea, mostly diarrhea, but occasionally constipation, but mostly diarrhea. I was just like, my body was trying to get rid of something mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it just felt like my food was not being digested. I just felt like I was a salad shooter, you know, mm. just everything wow. coming out the same as I ate it, you know. And so also you were very fatigued, like you mentioned, uh, being tired to. Oh, uh, yeah. I could hardly uh, move. Okay. You know, I went to the doctor and he uh, had, he wanted to put me on thyroid medicine. You know, I finally agreed to do it, but I was only on it for three days and decided that I was going to cold turkey quit it because I didn't want to take any prescription drugs. But you were, mm -hmm. your thyroid was affected, right? So what was the number? So your thyroid when he found out? Well, you know, my TSH was eight, it was up to eight. And uh, my cholesterol was like to 285. Uh-huh. And, so uh, and your TSH was high Eight, mm -hmm. you went into medication, right? You took medication. Yeah, and I did it for like three days. I realized, and I made such oh, a difference, I realized I would need it. But then at the same time, I started to have a problem. And when I looked into it, I realized that it's not what the way the body does it. It doesn't do it the way that this prescription drug does it. So I quit. And I had ordered some uh, um, grass-fed bovine thyroid from New Zealand. And that's what I took. I took, each okay. one was 40 milligrams. And um, so I took four of those a day 
Okay, and it made so all the you difference took in that the world. for how long? Oh, probably um, until I st got into your program, which was actually not that long ago. It's been about two years now, I think, when I found okay, your book. So you did do the some other type, the alternative uh, thyroid for mm -hmm. the thyroid. So you did it for a while, right? Yeah, I did it for a while, probably for uh, maybe under a year, somewhere under a year. Yeah. And, um, also, your cholesterol was high. Anything else showing abnormal in your labs, perhaps? Yes. Uh, well, my cholesterol and, and uh, what's the other thing that shows up bad when cholesterol does? Um, high cholesterol and, oh, I can't think of it at the moment. Sorry. The, but the, so some other things that had to do with uh, cholesterol were high as well. Mm -hmm. But other How about that, the inflammatory they, markers? Do you have any inflammatory uh, markers that were high? I don't think anybody ever looked for anything like that. You know, I did my genetic testing. I um, and uh, thought that that might be helpful, but and the doctor didn't even look at my genetic testing paperwork. He just wanted to give me a shot. You know, so. Okay, so so you were going looking uh, in the conventional uh, way to get help, and then you basically. All these therapies you did is because you're on research, right? Just uh -huh. trying to heal yourself. And yeah. uh, so tell me now, then you find out about the diet that we teach in men missionary because we train medical mm -hmm. missionaries in diet. So you, you start following the diet, which is very simple. There is no processed foods. It's anti-inflammatory. You know, that's all it is. It's balanced because even though somebody might be thinking, you know, I go plant-based, I'm sick, but the plant-based also can be not balanced. It has to be balanced. It has to be inflammatory, no processed foods. And uh, so we had to have the servings uh, from all the groups of foods. Um, yeah. So when you start the diet, because you were doing everything else, right? You knew all the all the laws of health that are very important. It's not just the diet; everything is important. But the diet is uh, usually the problem, because it's so easy to eat processed foods, plant based, or vegetarian, or eat uh, you know veggie meats and veggie all that that is very processed uh, with a lot of chemicals. And if it's not it can be also contaminated with glyphosate, which is one of the biggest problems. So tell me when you start, I, I just want to know, was it difficult to follow this diet? And why do you think it was difficult? Okay. So when I first, when I got your book and I downloaded it and then I printed it so I could work with it more closely. When I looked at the program, I thought, oh man, a uh, different kind of legumes every single day. So that means that I have to um, plan ahead. But at first I felt a little intimidated. Um, and then, um, I, you know, all this food, I'm going to have some leftovers to deal with. And I had to go, okay, how am I going to do this? But once I said, okay, I'm just going to start, I'm going to do one day. And if I can't go any further, then as soon as I can, I'll do another day. You know, and I thought, I'm just going to do what I can. And so I planned for the next day and prepared for it. And I did that. And I found that after a week or two, I had all of my supplies. I had all the equipment. I was able to then plan ahead and it actually kind of fell into place. Pretty soon I had all these little servings of beans in the freezer, <laughs> all these, you know, things and uh, so that I was prepared ahead of time in advance. And so it actually got pretty easy. Oh, praise the Lord. It's good to know that because a lot of people can get intimidated. And I believe mm -hmm. the reason is because uh, people don't cook anymore. It's so easy to buy something and warm it up and just put a, a little seasoning and yeah. but this is foods from scratch right it's simple yeah. actually mm -hmm. they're they're simple foods all you mm -hmm. do is cooking your legumes and then just putting some uh, garlic on your salt and then you do your salads you have to do salads mm -hmm. big salads and you have to have another dish with vegetables and you have a some carbohydrate, complex carbohydrates, a root or, or quinoa, something like that. So it's, it's a complete balanced lunch. And then for breakfast, then we had to have also, people usually have a, a box of cereal 
and they use the same thing every day or they can have a couple or three and they use that thing. But, you know, for breakfast, you have to prepare your breakfast from scratch and you have to choose different cereals that you make it. Then you have to make your smoothie that you make it because all the, uh, we don't want to miss the fatty acid seeds there and the fats and, you know, the berries that have a lot of vitamin C and, and, and beside that other fruits. And then you have to have your bread and you have your butter. So it can be intimidating, intimidating for people that just buy the bread and they just buy the cereal and they just don't do a, smooth, uh, a smoothie. They just uh, um, don't eat even breakfast. Most of people, they, they drink coffee, right? They don't even yeah. drink, eat breakfast. Yeah. But, so it, it's a change of mind, but it is actually only healing foods the way God created without the poisons of, of glyphosate or, or any mm -hmm. other oh, yeah. you know, pesticides, herbicides. And actually, oh, yeah. the way God created, they are healing foods, simple healing foods. Well, um, it, the efforts just totally pays off because, you know, you start to feel good. I think within two days, I just started feeling, I noticed a difference so fast. Mm -hmm. And the thing of it is, is that it's not that hard. Once you realize it's not that hard, you just have got to get yourself organized. Mm -hmm. So you can do while it. it's simple because you got your food in the freezer, leftovers, mm -hmm. legumes, leftovers of cereal in the freezer, which is, that's what it takes mm -hmm. time. Besides, our, we like to sprout the foods because it gives you more nutrition and uh -huh. helps you uh, digest them better. Uh -huh. So digestion is better. There's so many studies. One of these days, I like to do a, a podcast, Why Sprouting? Because there is, um, you know, science behind that. It is, uh, you can digest better and the nutrition goes higher and, uh, and the anti-nutrients decrease also. You know, the anti-nutrients yeah. are... You know, something just to protect the seeds from, from insect things like that. It's not something like, you know, it, it's nothing more than that. So we just have to prepare accordingly. And people tell us, you know, it's better, big difference when they're sparrowing when they're not. So oh, that's, yeah. that's simply the way we do it. Some people just soak them because you know, it's just softer. The food is softer also and things like that. So they suck. So, you know, not everybody might do the sprouting, but if they at least sucked and, and drinks it well, that will be a plus. But you yeah. did you did uh, the seven days. Seven days is a lot. You, we have another program. Yeah. We teach us four days. I did it for, for like three or four months. But you know what? I, I, I just have to tell you that... Um, after one week, I noticed that my weight was going down. And after, I think it was about three weeks, I went in to test my, <clears throat> well, the doctor was after me. She wanted me back on the thyroid medication. So I went back in to test and uh, my th my cholesterol was 168, 168. Oh, wow. It went and, down wrong. Uh, and she, she was not very happy, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell us again, your cholesterol was what before and what is um, It was 285. And after like three weeks, three weeks, I went into test and it was 168. Wow. Praise the Lord. Were you eating coconut at that time? Oh, I was eating coconut. Yeah, yeah. I had okay. the, I had all the green, young green coconuts and I'd take my hatchet and whack them the, when babies yeah. open. <laughs> and the reason I'm asking you this is because some people, and I believe it's, you know, I'm just what uh -huh. i'm thinking is because the liver might not be functioning well because um some people we had to remove the coconut to decrease the cholesterol but some people they do just fine like yourself so i'm thinking it's because they might need a uh you know some workout with the with the liver all so right in, sure. in your case uh it you went it went down so it wasn't a problem at all yeah and but, i lost 30 pounds in like four oh, months in how long yeah. four months i went i went from 165 pounds. to down to 135 seven mm -hmm. pounds a week you were losing yeah. one pound a day yeah well if that's like in four months actually oh in four months okay so yeah. that is uh a week 30 15 uh seven a week right oh uh, no 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 seven a month seven a month yeah so about seven pounds a month which is a really good rate because you know it's not going to just come back back on you know yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. okay and then and tell me uh 
how long did it take for the neurological symptoms to be gone? After I, you know, man, I started sleeping good before the week was over. And uh, I think it was probably, probably at the end of, uh, of a month, I noticed that I just was feeling great. Mm -hmm. I was thinking clearly my morning Bible studies were taking on new meanings. I was able to share thoughts and ideas at church that I hadn't been able to think very clearly for a while. I think it was surprising some people. Oh, you mean there's somebody in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know it made such a difference in my life. And and uh, I am so grateful for it. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm back on it right now because... Uh, I, that's a problem going to church and eating the food at potluck. And pretty soon I was eating all kinds of things because I was feeling so good. I thought, well, maybe I'm well, maybe I can eat normally, but, uh, I don't, <laughs> but, but, but normally probably is abnormally, right? Because yeah, normally right, yeah, it's right, a yeah. chemicals, normally it's yeah. foods that are not clean, you know, mm -hmm. the process and things like that. But uh, um, I like what you said about it really affected in the positive way your spirituality. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when we have leaky God, we call it, you have leaky brain, affects your brain. And then you have this brain fog. You know, I had that when I was sick. This was, you know, 2003 to 2006. So I had such a brain fog. So I couldn't concentrate studying my Bible, my Sabbath school lesson, things like that. So it does affect our spirituality. And uh, so that's why God wants us to be in good health. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely it's very important to to recover, to to be connecting with God, because it's just hard to concentrate reading his word. But, oh, but yeah. uh, in spite of going through that, God has compassion on, on us and God can bring us back, right? Like, oh, yeah. in, your case, like in your case, you were sick since 2000. So you start doing this um, diet two years ago. Uh, so it was over 20 years, 22 years, see, sick, trying to find an answer. Finally, you find the answer in something so simple. It's just the oh. way God created. It was just eating foods oh. the, way God, the way God created. Yeah. That was so amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the thing also is that these foods are healing, you know, this food is detoxifying and you don't have to find mm -hmm. this expensive treatment like you were, you were looking for oh, yeah. all these 20, mm -hmm. over 20 years looking and spending yeah. so much money. It was, it reminded mm -hmm. me the lady that, you know, Jesus cure, trying to spend on all the doctors so much money and it was in the, in the simple things. It was just in this healing foods that got made it. And also, um, just uh, removing toxins and uh, these foods is what we need and plus all the other loss of health too that God has given us which is very important too so I just want to encourage people out there that have been sick for so many years just just like uh, Caroline was sick for so many years suffering not enjoying life because you're surviving you've been surviving for over 20 years and it's been very tough, and you probably fell along, no, not understood, and um, disconnected, right? Disconnected from 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 society, from God, from church, because there is no energy for anything. Um, but God has compassion over us, and God has compassion on you in in uh, broad restoration. So we praise God for that, and I just want to encourage everybody that you know. God can do the impossible because you probably thought, okay, I guess I'm never going to heal. I'm going to die. And that's how I felt. That's why I felt when I was sick. I said, there's nothing can help me. I'm going from doctor to doctor and there's, um, they cannot find any, they not, cannot even find the problem what I had, but, um, uh, God, um, comes through. And sometimes, you know, Caroline, when we go through super hard times uh, and we recover, it becomes such a blessing because now we have the knowledge in our own lives how to help other people. You know, how to help other people, how to be a medical missionary for, for people that are perishing uh, in suffering and like you have been suffering. So um, it becomes a, a blessing. And, you know, I went through this not as many years as you, 
I just went through this uh, uh, for three years and took me about two years to recover from 2006 to 2008. Every every week I was better and better and better until I recovered because I didn't know many of the principles I was just learning. And, uh, and I praise God that it only took you one month to feel good and to recover. Yeah. <laughs> it took me two years to feel normal uh, in my case, but I praise God for all this learning experience because now, you know, we can help other people are seeking. Uh, you know, when I received your email uh, with your testimony, I was like, uh, I, I was like praising the Lord because I said, wow, what a transformation. And then you reaching out, out to me, not for you. You were reaching out to me because you wanted me to help a, a group in New Zealand. Is that in New Zealand? A, a group yeah. that is... Well, in Norway. In how many, Norway. Uh, Norway, Norway. How many mm -hmm. people are in that group? Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I know that uh, on her Zoom call, she has something like 2,500 people, but I don't know how many of the people are, you know, are in need of, you know, different help. So I don't know everybody. So no, it's a but... huge group. It's a very big group. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason you reach out to me because you wanted to help other people, you know, and yeah. that's the blessings of uh, when we go through hard time in this, this, uh, this suffering that we went through, it becomes into a blessing to help other people. So I did reach out to, to your friend, Eva, and, uh, I, I said, yeah, I can help with some lectures um, because they were trying to do other therapies that you didn't think they were gas ways. So you were mm -hmm. trying to reach other people spiritually and also, you know, physically for the conditions that other people are have, having and suffering. Okay, well, thank you so much. This is this has been an amazing journey. And uh, so I just pray that God continue to bless in you, continue to giving you the energy mm -hmm. to reach others. Um, there's nothing more, more special than having your own testimony to have the impact over people that are suffering just like you were suffering. Amen. I just want to thank you so much for this time. And it's almost one hour. And I just want to tell everybody, um, I uh, want to do some announcements. There is something coming up in November. We're going to have our medical missionary conference in san diego so you can check it out we have a website is called um medmissionary dot um camp medmissionary dot camp so you can check it out for the dates for so we would love to see you there in november it's at the beginning of november mm -hmm. and then um what else we have? We have an ARP program. The ARP program stands for Autoimmune Recovery Program. This is a program to bring to the churches. So you can bring this program to your church and invite the community. You want to invite the church also. People are sick, people that want to be medical missionaries, but this is uh, for outreach also, especially for outreach. So people love, love, love these programs. Uh, because uh, you're helping them with inflammation, with pain. So I just want to tell you a little story. Um, Sunday, this Sunday, two days ago, I went with a, a young lady from the church to do community community um, outreach. Uh, so we went and we decided instead knocking doors throughout, because we live in the country. So knocking doors you can walk long distance to find another house so we decided okay let's go to the the store where there's a gas station and then another couple was going to and you go to another store it was the dollar store you stay there and then we pass for the people that come in so in a short time we got um 12 people that are interested to come to the uh, autoimmune recovery program. So we were like so excited. So at the at the beginning, we we uh, met at the church and we prayed that God bless, God favor us with people that are willing to come. So when we finished, the other couple joined us, came wherever we were, and we prayed thanking God because he did favor us. And there was 12 people interested to come to our uh, autoimmune recovery program that's going to take place um, August 18 in our church. This is the second time we're doing. My church decided to do the, the board vote to do this 
every three months because they saw the results. This is the second time we're doing the first time we got 10 people coming just from passing flyers at Sabbath before. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all. We so now we're going to uh, we're going to do three Sabbaths because our goal is to have 20 people from the community. So and the people love it because all I said is, you know, uh, our, our church is going to have a program to help with inflammation and pain. Would you like to come? And they said, oh, yeah, I have pain. I have a lot of inflammation. Okay, what is your name? What is your number? That's all That's all we need. So so that's why we met people. And then I will follow up. I will call because for me, these are souls, precious souls. I'm going to call them the Sunday before uh, that morning when we have the program and remind them that we have uh, classes. You know, some people didn't look interested, but then they say, do you allow kids? You know. Oh, they are interested. I said, yes, bring all the kids you want to bring. And then so then we we got a, a telephone because it's my number contact there for people to come. So somebody sent me a text and say, oh, I just want to let you know that I want to sign up and I want to come, things like that. So praise the Lord. Um, that is the program for bringing uh, to your churches in our reach, to do outreach to the community. It's called ARP. And you can find that and uh it has we have a website also for it. It's ARP.diet. ARP.diet. So if you choose you want to sign up, uh just send us a, a message there, an email. So um, well, that's all for now. And I just wanna thank you so much again, Caroline. Hope to see you in the men missionary training. And uh we oh, wanna close you. with a <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so nice to having you. And um, we are gonna close with a word of prayer. The Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you have done with Caroline in the life of Caroline. I just want to ask you special blessings for her that you can use her in a very powerful way. And uh, so she can spread your message and use this as a, the right arm to bring souls to you. And I just want to ask you for us to do the same for um, our audience also. And perhaps somebody sick that uh, your healing hand will be upon them as they follow uh, your ways of healing. Thank you so much for all you've done and all you're doing and all you will be that doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mercy. Bless you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Take care.